Welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to do uh, where you show and hide the navigation bar uh, or the header or uh, any sort of uh, top element. When you scroll down it goes away and then when you scroll back up it comes back so that you have access to it. Uh, this is a really great pattern because what it does is helps you uh, preserve screen space but it still gives the user the opportunity to interact with the navigation bar um, but as they're reading down the page you get that extra hundred pixels or whatever uh, at the very top of the screen so you sort of take back some of the screen real estate um, so let's just set up our all I, I have a couple of 100 viewport height divs here just to induce scrolling so that we have to scroll or we get an opportunity to scroll. I'm going to add a section here to the top and I'm just going to add it to the very front of the uh, body so this is going to be the topmost in our HTML and inside of that I'm going to add just the pre um, the pre-made component here that's called navbar. I'm just going to plop that in there. So we have our navigation bar at the top and you can see right now that it's it's scrolling with the page. Uh, what we want is for this navigation bar, and I'm going to change the background color because white might be a little better. Um, <coughs> what we want is for this to stay, to stick to the top of the screen, and the way that we do that is we go to uh, here where it says position. So the elements, elements position is relative right now, which means it is just in the normal flow of the document but we want to attach it to the top of the viewport. So the way we do that with CSS is with position fixed. And so we click position fixed and we say top and left and that's where it's going to be. Now once you do that it shrinks everything up so we're going to have to actually give it an explicit width and you can say 100% uh, is fine. And then that'll make it 100% of whatever its container is. Um, <coughs> which right now the container is this section here which is a block level element so it's going to be a hundred percent of the body element or whatever its parent element is so we have our fixed position you can see that everything is moving this is where the two sections come together when you scroll so this fixes it to the top um, if you wanted a bottom uh, footer then you would fix it to the bottom uh, if you wanted something to the left, that's not going to work very well. Uh, you could affix it to the top right. It's the same thing as top left. Once you do, once you apply the 100% width, it's not any different. So we have our our top header here sticking, and now we need to make the interaction that when we scroll down, it needs to go up and get out of the way, and then when we scroll back up. <coughs> it needs to come down and show so we can interact with it. Um, so we need to, we'll just click on the nav bar. You can see that that's what's, uh, that's what I have so far. You could do the whole section if you wanted to. <coughs> Either way is not a big deal because it's a position fixed. Uh, one thing I want to do is make sure that this is like a higher number the Z index that way when you're scrolling if you have other elements on the page it won't go behind them it'll actually be over the top of them um, if you have a hundred explicit elements <laughs> on the page then you're gonna have to make this number go up higher you can make it a thousand if you want to it, it doesn't really matter uh, you just need to make sure that it it gets above all of the other elements so Z index controls the depth of the page so uh, you can control the depth of all of your elements on the page. We just want to make sure that's always on the top. So we click on our section. <coughs> Actually, we're clicking on the nav bar first, and then we'll come into our interactions tab, and we want to go down here to a page trigger. And the page trigger that we want to do is this page scrolled, not the continuous scrolling, but we want to say when the page is scrolled up or when the page is scrolled down, then we want the animation to do something. So let's focus first on the scrolling down because that's the 
the first action the user is going to take. And so when the user scrolls down, we want this to go up, out of the way. So let's start an animation. And we can get rid of these. These are previous. So you should have nothing here. And you can click on a new animation. And we're just going to say hide header. <coughs> And then make sure that this uh, nav bar 2 is clicked, um, that it's chosen. I'm sorry. You click it to choose it. And then we go in and our we add our animations. So we want this to move. So that's the transform animation we're going to do. And we want it to start here on the page load. So we'll set the initial state uh, to exactly what it is, which is um, 0 pixels. And then, our at the end of our animation, we want it to have moved. Um, I'm just going to put minus 100%. And what what that 100% is is, it's this whole element takes up a certain amount of space. So from the top of this element to the bottom of it is 100%. Uh, you can actually get the size of this element if you know it. You could make an educated guess. Uh, but minus 100% is going to give you, it's going to push the the bottom of the element right to the, where the top of it is. So however tall this is, it's going to go up that many pixels. So we're going to do that, and we can see, oh, it needed to be chosen. Uh, so you can see here nav bar 2, but this one doesn't have anything. So it's telling me that I need to change my target. So I click, I right click on it, click change target come up and click that element and now it's gone because I'm I'm at the end of the animation you can see this at the beginning and that's the end of the animation so if we want to see it we can see it move up you see how that works so we're moving from our zero position which is where it, it just is when you put it into the CSS and you decide where it wants to live on the page at page load and then the end of our animation pushes it up 100% if we had said something like mm, let's say 80% you can see that at 80% it peaks out a little bit you can see that this is our navigation bar so when I'm telling you it's 100% this bottom edge is just right at the top Okay. <coughs> that that's a little trick that works really well if you have a uh, some sort of a box shadow on it um, like if we were to put if we were to add a box shadow to this and just leave it like that <coughs> and then we come back to to here when it moves up you can see that a hundred percent is not quite enough you, you get this little shadow peeking out and the, the longer the shadow the more of it sticks out so whenever you have a box shadow on it it's good to do like 125%. That way it goes all the way up. And it's not very much, uh, it's not much farther up, but it is far enough up that that box shadow doesn't peek out from the side. If that's what you want, then go for 100%. But just know that sometimes when you have a, a menu flying in from the side, there's a box shadow on it or from the bottom. And that's one way you just push it 125%. So you get another, uh, quarter of the height or the width of that el of that element and it just pushes it out off the page so you don't see the box shadow okay little trick uh, I don't want that so I'm going to um, how do we do it we delete it there we go so no box shadow it's just gonna be what it is and if we test this then we can see as we scroll down it moves away so you can see here at the bottom uh, we have actually scrolled down, right? But the problem is, when we scroll back up, it's still tucked away because we, <laughs> we haven't created a an equal and opposite interaction. I just made that up. I hope that's uh, that could be a t-shirt. Um, so when the page is scrolled, uh, we've done our, when we scroll down, we've hidden the header, and now we need to do an action for when we scroll up. So we're going to start an animation and we're just going to leave this one here and create a new animation and this one's going to say show header 
and again we need to select nav bar make sure that nav bar 2 is selected and then we uh, we merely reverse the transform that we just did so we want to set this as the initial state and it's going to be minus 100 percent because that's where our uh, header is living and when the animation is finished we want it to come back to zero so you can see it starts up and then comes down you can see it here okay you see how it it comes down on the page um, and when we look we have our our scrolled uh, when the user scrolls down the hide header is what's going to play and when the user scrolls up the show header is what's going to play so when we come to our page and we scroll down it goes away when we scroll up it comes back in so that's a pretty easy uh, animation to do let's make it a little bit smoother um, so we go into our show and we we look at the ending animation and we want to give it uh, some better easing so let's just do ease in ease out and maybe over 4.4 seconds so let's see how that that comes down just a little bit uh, quicker but also a little gentler and um, you see how it doesn't just keep going at one speed it kind of comes in quickly and then slows down as it gets to the end and then for our hide uh, we'll do the same thing come down to the second to the ending of the animation and we want to do <coughs> uh, ease in ease out again and you can see it kind of starts a little bit slowly and then picks up speed as it goes along and you should be able to see it better when we're out here so you can see that that didn't just move at one single speed okay and so that's a pretty easy um, and so now the user has access again but once you're here um, they don't have access to the header bar because theoretically they would be scrolling down looking at your content and as the user starts to scroll back up now maybe they want access to more pages or maybe they want access to different parts of the page that you're on um, so this is a, a nice little UX pattern and pretty easy to do in uh, in Webflow. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, click the subscribe button and click the little bell. The bell lets you know uh, when I've uploaded a new uh, new videos to my website, to the channel, and <coughs> then you can come back and uh, see what I've posted. I think usually you get an email if you've signed up for email notifications from, from YouTube. Uh, but they also come on the app itself if you hit the bell icon. If you haven't uh, signed up for Webflow or you want to try this tutorial out, uh, Webflow is actually free uh, to use at the beginning. Um, just to try it out, everything that I've done here today, you're able to do just by logging in and uh, creating a free account. You can find a link to that in the description. And... Uh, What's the last part? Oh, you can connect with me on Twitter. I, I'm always looking to know who's watching the videos and, and connect with you if you're on Twitter. Um, I think that's all I got for now. I'm going to try to uh, hammer out a few of these uh, for this week. So my production schedule might be a little bit uh, more aggressive this week than, than normal. But uh, I've got lots of, uh, I'm starting to pile up some Webflow videos. So I have a Webflow playlist you should be able to see right about now and uh, click on that playlist there's lots of different stuff uh, that I show you how to do including how to build a blog or a complete website in Webflow alright thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time